Welcome to Vienna. Welcome to Wiener Wortstätten. Uh, I'm very happy to present you today the masterclass of Gerhild Steinbuch. But before she starts, I'll tell you a little bit about Wiener Wortstätten. Since 2005, um, we support playwrights in their work. We uh, founded together with the director Hans Escher um, a kind of laboratory for playwrights to um, create maybe new ways uh, of writing for the stage. Since five years, we are part of the project uh, Fabula Mundi, Playwriting Europe. And in the framework of Fabula Mundi, this masterclass uh, will take place. So before Gerhild starts, um, I will tell you why we invited her. Because uh, first of all, she is a famous Austrian playwright. Second, um, she is part of the Austrian selection of Fabula Mundi playwrights. Third point, she is an, not only a, a playwright, but also a political activist in the field of theater and uh, literature. And uh, last point, uh, she is uh, head of the department of creative writing on the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. So now I am very happy to introduce you, Gerhild Steinbuch, and her masterclass with the title Alternative Fiction. Hi, I'm Gerhild Steinbuch. I'm a writer from Austria. I write plays for theater, musical theater, and I also teach uh, creative writing. So I'm going to talk about my writing and why I write and what topics are important to me. I'm going to start with a reading a little bit and then I'm going to talk about my work, show some examples, some videos, some pictures. But first off, I want to start by confessing that I never work alone. Maybe I would like to be a writer who creates things on her own, but nothing big comes out of me and maybe it's just not in there at all. Perhaps the idea of this great big thing is just a kind of Austrian megalomania after all that one shouldn't deal with in any case. When I became a writer, or rather started being perceived as a writer, a fragile and poetic young female writer to be precise, I was indeed very young. And if I've learned anything from being young, it's that I don't want to work on my own. The author Katharina Hartwell recently wrote about two stereotypes of so-called female writing, the machine and the child who plays. The machine produces and produces, but whether she understands anything about literature is uncertain. The playing child has fun and plays, the real work is left to the man. What these attributions imply regarding the writer, her self-image and how she is perceived by others is one thing. The other question is what that implies regarding her writing. The text and its language ends up in a drawer or in a drawer in which it is stuck and ought to stay in. Much like the writer's body, which is seen on quite a lot of photos, but becomes more and more invisible. Her story becomes more and more invisible. Well, doesn't matter, right? Because after all, there is still the other story, isn't it? Feminine, fragile, poetic, for example. Or hysterical, difficult, someone you should be afraid of. Writing, I believe, can be one thing, and that is that it can be many. It can be many because it remains flexible, because it flees from the writer and comes back to her again. It's a search where you don't know what to look for. Or, to put it another way, it's a search that lets you discover things on the way you hadn't planned on. That's writing for me. Not knowing how to do it and failing, but staying in motion and then, at some point, knowing more. Still not knowing how to do it, though, writing is failure. So failure should be a place where something begins. Now, how does that work? If I learned something from being a young so-called female writer at some point, it is that being on my own is nice, but working alone isn't. My inner life is as uninteresting as the author's image of it, which I'm constantly confronted with. Neither has anything to do with the world I want to live in, because I don't want to live in it alone. Neither has anything to do with the world in which, at least that's how I'd like to think of it, I will have lived in. 
Because even if you look out the window and into the doomsday scenario outside, you still want to have a little bit of utopia to move towards, even though you know that you will not get there eventually. But you could be on your way there, and that's what counts. So what is this world which I want to write in, that I want to write about? It's a world that A. remembers, and in which I, B. shut up, so that there are other bodies and other biographies seen and heard. But it's also a world in which my body can exist as it is, because it is with many. Okay, so I'm now going to start with point A, a world that remembers. Uh, for me, writing is always political, whether it intends to be or not, and whether you like it or not, it's always political. So um, for me, it's important as a writer to address political topics in any way. And um, for me, coming from Austria and also coming from a family of, well, not victims, but, but perpetrators, um, it was important for me in the beginning to work with the language of perpetrators. So um, this um, language is a very wide field. It doesn't only cover, of course, a language of um, right-wing extremists um, and their ancestors, um, but it also covers the position of people who are in power and um, who um, decide who is allowed to speak and who is not allowed to speak. Coming from Austria and us having a right-wing government first time in um, the year 2000, and then again, um, it's important for me um, to look at this kind of political language and um, deconstruct it in my writing. And um, by doing so, um, I started um, uh, researching uh, around the right-wing movement in Austria, especially the new right-wing movement, which is actually very old, the so-called identitarian movement. And um, by uh, Working alongside of it and um, tracking its roots um, throughout Europe, um, I discovered quite a lot of interesting uh, similarities or um, points, meeting points between the identitarian movement and the National Socialist Underground, or at least um, their surroundings. And um, with this research, um, I started working on a play. Um, it was called um, Beate Uwe Uwe Selfie Click. Um, it was a uh, play which I developed together with a director for a theatre in Chemnitz, um, the City Theatre in Chemnitz, and um, they hosted a festival uh, where they invited different productions from all over Germany um, who dealt with the National Socialist Underground and right-wing extremist movements in Germany. So um, I started researching for that play and um, for me at the beginning it was very difficult to um, address this topic because it was very important for me, but also um, it's such a big topic that it's um, difficult to find a form for it. So I decided not to go down the road um, of having a story with characters, but rather um, um, looking at the way um, people talk about the National Socialist Underground and especially the trial and Beate Zschäpe. And for me it was very interesting to look at the language the media used portraying her and um, describing her either as the female sexual devil or the nice little um, stuffed animal. So um, either way, it was very derogative and I found it very interesting that um, the way um, the media talked about her was um, um, very derogative, um, sexist in a way, and um, this sexist language was used to criticize somebody on the other hand who, who was right-wing extremist, is right-wing extremist and who, um, who is very racist. And um, for me this um, failure of um, addressing a topic correctly by the media um, was very interesting and um, um, therefore um, I decided to use a lot of um, document documentary material to work on this play and I did a lot of research and in fact the play was, um, the, well the research part of the play was much longer than the actual text. So um, for the show we decided to use research material as well as text written by me and um, we also decided to not only have actors and actresses but also have puppets and we had a very big puppet of Beate Zschäpe um, who um, 
consisted of um, very different body parts um, representing all the different narratives used to describe her and also used to um, defend um, uh, right-wing um, extremist um, assaults towards people and um, for me um, this was especially interesting because um, the way we used the puppet on stage um, was also similar to the way um, I try to use language in my writing, um, uh, existing language, language that um, um, well um, follows a narrative which is in power, language that is, that is derogative, that is racist, that is sexist. And um, I always, like I said before, the language of the perpetrators, I try to um, work with it, I try to deconstruct it, and it was interesting for me to have an object on stage that does the same thing. <laughs> As I said before, I'm very interested in um, observing um, political tendencies and especially um, having a look at the language which is used and I'm interested in um, deconstructing it and um, with this um, aim, I'm not alone. Um, there are a lot of uh, writers who like to work this way, so um, for us, who like to work this way, um, it was kind of self-explanatory to work together. So in 2016, um, in Austria, there were elections for the president of the Federal Re Republic of Austria. And there was a right-wing candidate, Norbert Hofer, for the FPÖ, um, Freedom Party of Austria, which is the extremist right party in Austria. And um, it was the first time somebody from the, from the FPÖ um, um, tried to participate in this election. So um, I talked with some of my colleagues, um, to name them Sandra Gugic, who is a writer from Austria, Jörg Albrecht, writer from Germany, Thomas Arz, Thomas Köck, who both write plays, are playwrights, like myself. And um, we talked about how um, we as writers could um, take a stand or um, take a position and um, make our voices heard. And um, so we decided to found a blog and the blog was called Anazis und Goldmund. And um, on this blog, um, we decided to publish um, one text each week, each Wednesday, five minutes before 12. And um, we wrote about um, things that had happened during the last week, um, developments in Austrian, but also European um, politics. And uh, we tried to ad address right-wing topics. We tried to address um, um, sexism, we tried to address racism, and um, it was not only the five of us, but we invited a lot of colleagues, friends, other writers, as well as musicians and um, visual artists to um, contribute to our blog. So we did this for a while, and for us it felt very useful, because finally um, we, we, um, well, we made our voices heard, we, um, we said this is not okay, and we also used um, our tools, writing, um, to do so. But um, after some time, it kind of felt shallow. It felt like, um, well, everybody liked what we were doing and then we were invited to readings and um, to shows. And it kind of felt like um, for um, trying to be, uh, well, criticizing, the government or the establishment, um, you become the establishment. So um, it was not very satisfying for us. So um, we decided to do something else. And we um, hosted a conference in 2018 in Berlin. Um, it was called Angst is now a Weltanschauung, following a, um, an album um, by a musician, uh, B. Fleischmann from Austria, which was called Angst is not a Weltanschauung. Well, played on that and called our conference Angst is 
now a Weltanschauung. And for this conference, we invited um, different artists, writers, musicians, visual artists, also journalists, but also kind of everybody um, to come together with us for a few days in Berlin um, to work in think tanks on um, topics like um, the use of language I've mentioned before, but also how can we collaborate, how can we like build an alliance together. And um, this was very interesting for us and um, it, um, we also felt it was purposeful because um, we used our well names and our blogs and the little bit of fame or interest we had gained before that to uh, bring more people together and to form a network and um, also to hear other positions um, not as privileged as our positions. And um, from this experience um, we developed the idea um, of um, doing more formats like this not only writing, not only performing, but also hosting talks. So we came up with a concept where we brought two positions together, one um, artistic position and one scientific position. Um, they came together and they talked, they gave a little input and then they talked with the audience basically. And this was a series of events we hosted at the Brut in Vienna. Um, it was called Interspeeches. And um, for us, um, of course, um, people might think, oh, but they are writers, why are, not, why are they not writing? Why are they hosting conferences now? Why are they hosting talks now? But for us, um, it was so important to um, think about um, language or um, the, the, the problematic use of language. And um, for us, it felt more purposeful to um, widen our field of activities and not only sit behind our desk and just write. Because for us and also for me, writing is not only something I do as my work, but it's difficult to separate it from my uh, political <laughs> point of view. It's um, difficult to separate it from my, um, well, practical daily life. So, um, of course, it makes sense to, um, if you're an activist in um, real life, it's you should also be it in your writing. So um, that's why that made sense for us and made sense for me. And um, from these um, talks on, which we hosted in Vienna, um, we developed an idea. And this idea was to um, co-found a movement which already existed in Germany at that time um, in Vienna to find uh, an Austrian division of that mov movement and that movement um, is called The Many, and um, I will show you some pictures now and also um, play you some music.
So the many, die vielen, um, is a movement uh, which was founded in Germany by artists basically. And it's a movement which stands for a um, plural society, um, an open society. And um, they developed the declaration of the many, uh, which is a declaration which institutions and also artists can sign. And with these declarations, you declare that you, um, you don't discriminate, you use your power to defend others who are not in power, you stand as an ally against racism, against sexism, against homophobia, um, and you stand for an open society. So um, after this movement was established in Germany, for us it felt um, like the right thing to also establish it in Austria. And it was founded in May 2019 in Austria. For us it felt um, like it was the right time to found this movement because um, Austria was having a right-wing government again and um, having racist thoughts, having nat nationalist thoughts and talking in a, in a very racist or derogative way um, kind of became the state of um, the art in the middle of society. And so for us it felt um, that it made sense to found this movement in Austria and it still exists to that day and smaller as well as bigger institution institutions have joined the many and um, have signed the declaration. So this is something I'm very happy about. And again, like I said, of course, this is not writing, but um, on the other hand, this is exactly writing because it's what you do all day, what you think about and what you need to think about um, if you want, I think, if you want to write a text that um, doesn't only reflect on yourself, but also reflects on society. So I've talked about um, language and the use of language and the deconstruction of language um, quite a bit. Um, but what I want to talk about now is um, kind of like the opposite, not using language, being silent or like shutting up so that um, other stories are heard and other people are heard and also other biographies and other bodies are seen. And, and I want to talk about the second part. I talked about point B, um, about this world I would like to live in, a world in which I shut up and um, let other biographies be seen and heard and also their bodies. And regarding that, um, I am part of a collective, um, a theater collective, performance collective. It's called Freundliche Mitte, um, which means like the friendly center. Um, something like that and um, it's a collective um, which was founded by um, um, a stage artist, Feline Rinnert, um, an actress, Sebastian Straub, a musician, Bernhard Fleischmann and me. And we all work as experts in our own field, but we work without a director um, because we think it's important to, um, well, be experts, but then discuss a lot. And um, what is very important about our collective is that um, we try to constantly expand our group of people and we always try to not only work with other artists but um, work with a lot of different people. Um, we um, work with a lot of different initiatives. For example, we worked with um, Jugend am Werk, um, which is a um, non-profit organization in Austria. And we worked with a um, group of young carpenters who um, were part of an educational program there. Um, we worked with a, we are going to work with a cheerleading group. We're going to work um, with a soccer team. Um, we worked with um, different women from completely different backgrounds. And um, for us, um, it's very important to have this um, diverse group of people um, so that um, we don't only tell our stories, but we also um, listen to other stories and maybe reflect on our own stories and change them a, li them a little bit so that they don't only reflect back on us and we look perfect, but um, that they show a more realistic and more plural and more open society, to put it that bluntly. Zerstörung, ja, das müsste schon irgendwie drin sein, dass man irgendwas neu machen kann, also damit wieder Raum entsteht. Gibt es noch freie Flächen? 
Gibt es noch freie Geschichten, die irgendwo hingehen? Wie komme ich aus dem Tritt, aus dem Trott? Wie komme ich aus dem Rhythmus und aus der Gewohnheit raus? Jetzt geht die Tür auf. Jetzt. Common Grounds von Freundliche Mitte. Regarding topics, um, the projects uh, I work on with Freundliche Mitte are, um, of course, the topics are similar to um, the projects I mentioned before. Um, because they always deal with society, they deal with current political developments. But um, what makes a big difference for me is um, that we include so many different people and that um, actually my expertise or my writing is only a very small part. And very often I um, also silence my voice and um, rather use my writing to um, pick up someone else's story. And, um, To give an example for our last production, which was called Oratorio Europa, we worked with six different women from different backgrounds, different ages. The youngest was 16 years old and the oldest was 73. And um, they had very different stories. For example, the oldest woman, um, she, um, she was a political activist. I mean, she still is, but she also was when she was younger. And um, she had been part of so many um, developments in Austria, which I only read about. So um, for me, it felt completely useless to write any text for her. So we just let her develop her own text and I worked with that. And um, for me, um, this um, type of work is very um, important because um, when you're a writer and you do your thing and um, people like what you do, it's, um, it's very easy to be satisfied and to become um, lazy and too laid back. And for me to have this con constant confrontation with different perspective, perspectives, who also challenge my perspective, um, is uh, very, very important to um, not lose the drive for writing and for continuing to write. The last project I would like to talk about was also a collaboration with a group of different people, but it was kind of a different project because the projects I talked about before were freelance projects. And this one um, was at the State Theatre. Um, it was a project for the Schauspiel Bochum. And what was special for me about it was that um, we worked with a group of young actors, young actresses who were in the last year of um, studies. Before we started, we knew that we wanted to address um, contemporary society. And um, I also had the idea of um, talking about the image of the wolf and um, who is the wolf, who uses the symbol of the wolf and what is the wolf inside of me or inside of you. And um, so we started with this idea and I conducted interviews with um, the group of young actors, young actresses and um, collected topics um, which they were interested in and um, starting from that I wrote a text and um, the text um, is set in, well, basically a big gym, so it's a lot about Discipline on one side, I'm always being in motion, always having to deliver something and um, kind of um, ti being tired, um, feeling hopelessness, feeling hopeless, um, feeling isolated, not taking action on the other hand. This topic of um, being a wolf or who is the wolf, um, has been something that's been interesting for me for quite a while. People who are obviously aggressive, but people who are also passive aggressive or hide the wolfness um, behind a smile, behind politeness, um, behind like a fake mask. And um, this is something for me, this um, being a wolf, that um, not only applies to people on the right wing, 
side of the spectrum, but um, even more so for me, it applies to um, the center or um, what um, pretends to be the center, but is also um, very far to the right. Um, a center that's not non-existent, but um, establishes a um, hierarchical society, a society where it's most important to achieve something and who doesn't achieve something because he or she is um, not fit enough, not healthy, healthy enough, um, not born in the right circumstances, um, must fail and therefore cannot be part of society. And um, this kind of um, um, wolves dressed in um, suits, in slim fit suits and um, being very Catholic and um, being very polite um, for me is very interesting and um, I collaborated with a musician who I have collaborated before um, in our collective uh, Freundliche Mitte. I collaborated with him as well on a radio play and on performances where he um, writes the music and plays the music and I perform the text and I write the text and um, for the end of my lecture or almost the end of my lecture I would like to um, have you listen to a little bit of it and even though it's in German I hope you can take um, the music with you and um, maybe a little bit of the rhythm and the atmosphere. Das ist der Anfang. Da wohnt was zwischen den Gebäuden, in den Wänden, unter der Stadt, eine andere Stadt. Das Geräusch kennst du, wenn du als Kind das Ohr an die Fußbodenbalken legst, wenn du untertauchst im Hallenbad, wenn du dich umdrehst im Hausflur, wenn du in den Spiegel schaust, an die Tapete starrt dir was entgegen. Da wächst was unter der Stadt, es schiebt sich durch die Gassen in die Körper. Mit Wolfsaugen schaut es dir entgegen, wenn du in den Spiegel starrst. Mit Wolfsarmen und Beinen greift es nach dir und nimmt dich an der Hand, das packt ordentlich zu. Mit Wolfsfäusten und Tritten bringt es dich in Form. Das ist das, was du atmen hörst, wenn du dir nicht mehr sicher bist, ob du... Da ist eine zweite Welt in der Stadtwelt, die der, die einmal war, so täuschend ähnelt, dass du jetzt nicht mehr weißt, was echt ist und was nicht. Mit Kopieaugen schaust du dir zu beim ewigen Vorwärts. Mit Kopiearmen und Beinen hältst du dich fest am Nebenmensch, bringst ihn in Form. Und sicheren Blicks schaust um dich, das Wolfsgesicht starrt zurück, schiebt sich die Straße lang neben dir. Das will durch jede Pore, kämpfst du dagegen an, die Klammern ziehst du fest. Jetzt lächelt der Mensch. Schön. Die Wölfe kommen aus dem Wald, da kommen sie jetzt immer her. Braune Wölfe, graue Wölfe, weiße. Ja, vor allem die. Der Wald ist ein schöner, sicherer Ort, in dem alles Platz findet, was sonst keinen Platz findet in der Geschichte. In den Geschichten. Na, irgendwoher müssen die ja schließlich kommen, wenn die nicht aus unserer Mitte kommen. Draußen zieht ein Wolf vorbei. So, I hope this um, gave you a little bit of insight into the way I work, the topics I deal with and what I'm interested in. 
and I want to finish my lecture by um, reading a little bit to you what text means to me. When I think of text, I think of the text as an archive. It is kind of a counter archive opposing the authoritarian archives, which write stories from facts and present them as history. It is an archive that claims to only tell stories. It's polyphonic, sometimes it's silent. It's alternative fiction. When I think about solidarity and what that means or could mean for my writing, then this type of text to me could mean solidarity. Danke. Okay.